Hi, it's Lel from Me by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. And today I am going to be doing Bohemian meets foliage. Yes. Now, sometimes you, you pick up a piece of furniture, or certainly I do, and you can, for even a day, try and, you know, sort out and try and make it work with the things that are wrong with it. But I quite often, more, more, more often than not, work with the things that are wrong. Now, this piece has already had a few fixes in the workshop already. Um, Martin's been busy doing that. Um, it's a nice old set of vintage drawers. It's got the old brass keyholes and everything. Love all that. Now, this piece has got a bit of missing edging. It's really rustic and chipped and dinged and everything up here. So I'll be using chalk paint. I will be using some self-leveling paint, but they'll be more for sections on the front. So I'm going to leave all the paint descriptions and just pick colours that are similar out of whatever paint brand you use and I'll list them in the description box below just so that you've got a rough idea of what colours they wear. And now I want Martin to cut me out some beading. So I'm going to try and make that natural wood. I'm going to try and bring the, I'm really going to try and change this up. So I want a certain natural wood element to this as well. So I'm going to get Martin to cut me a beading. I've, I've, I've said to Martin I want it about four centimetres. So he's going to do that while I clean the carcass and um, give it a good paint of chalk paint. Now I'm going to be using this um, green colour. It's a, uh, I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a sage green. <laughs> Could be any colour. Um, it's a sage green paint. I think I'll maybe just keep it like that. I don't think I'm going to be mixing or blending or doing anything. I'm just wanting to keep it quite um, the colour it is at the moment until everything's done on the front and I may change that later. So I'm going to go on, clean, clean um, my piece, give Martin the drawers and the next time you see it, the carcass will be painted and we'll start painting the drawers because we'll paint the drawers stamp the drawers, apply the transfer, and then we will um, we'll put the beading on last just because I want to stamp right down into the edge. I don't want the stamp to kind of stop where the beading is and there'll be a gap. So that's what we're going to do. Right, so the carcass is dry. It's had two solid coats. There's nothing really much I can say about that. Just chalk paint. Every which way stroke. So that's, that's dry in there. That might have other things done to it, but let's move on to the drawers. These are the drawers top middle bottom now what i've done is i have used different grades of sandpaper to sand the section that i want to keep the wood now it's a little bit kind of distressed looking but i'm going to run with that because that's what i want so i've had to pick the sections that work without these nasty parts so then this is going to be painted 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 so all the bits that aren't destroyed with the big hole marks are going to be natural and they've been sanded so now what I've got is I've got a range of colours here these are all self-leveling these are the new Guild Lane paints so I've got a light green bronze I have this beautiful beautiful look at this colour of pink this is shell pink and I have O'Donnell pale primrose Dover chalk and British racing green and these are all colours that all work with this transfer so I've kind of worked out off camera where they want to be so I was thinking the dark racing green here this here the pink here and the yellow here the light green here and the white up there or the green up there I'll do the white down here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get a brush and I'm going to paint in the sections, each square that I don't want, um, that I need to paint. So I'm going to go ahead and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint these sections in. I'll be giving it two coats. I'd, I'd say, you know, there's, there's, there's not a huge amount of uh, point watching me. I'm just painting in these squares and painting them in nice and tidy and it's going to take two coats and let's hope these little indiscrepancies where the handles are, they're not going to paint smooth with this myself level in paint, but it's okay because these sections are the ones, all the painted sections are the sections that are going to have the transfers on. All these sections are going to have stamps on and we'll talk about that once I've done the squares. I've painted all my squares. Now, top tip here, I gave two coats to each one. 
some of it. I didn't even care if I painted it. There's a little tiny bit of bleed through there. There's two different colours going on here, which I like there. What I'm trying to say is this is now all going to be a little bit distressed. So this is not your life's work, these squares. It's all going to come together. This is the really ugly part of what we've done so far. And it, at the moment, you're probably looking at that and looking at this and going, this is just not going to work. But it will. So you have to stick with the process. So what I'm going to do now is I've got a kind of reasonably heavy grit. It's 160. And what I'm going to do is now there's going to be a piece of wood that comes down here. So you're not going to see any of the distress I do to this edge. But I'm just going to kind of just give it a little bit of a... And because I'm using... Yeah, I just want to give it a little bit of distress here and there. And if you feel like that's maybe not going to be enough, you can get a more meaty grit, which I've got here. And I think it'll be... So just a little bit, you don't need to go crazy, just, just a bit of a distress, something like this. And I'm just going to do this to all of them. Now, if you're sanding to distress kind of going across like like that so that it doesn't end up looking like a big line and it looks a little bit more natural so up and to the side don't worry too much this is self-leveling and it's got top coat on so there's a few scratches on this where I'm sanding but I'm not bothered about that because a transfer is going to go on these sections and um, we're going to put a little bit of palette knife distressing on this too so so this is the drawers done the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to just quickly move on to the stamping now i have a mix of redesigned by prima stamps here now i had to kind of fiddle with it Ooh, off camera and i think i'm going to do something like this one and this one on this section and how did I have it this one with this border on both sides for this section and for this up here I'm gonna have this going did I think that way with this and this either side Now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm there's no point picking a dark color because it's going on wood so you really have to go with I'm probably gonna do on this section here because the pinks up here I'm probably gonna do pink and this section up here I'm probably going to do white because it's far enough away from there and on this one here I'm probably going to pick this green so these are the three colours that I'm going to stamp with I'm just going to get my stamp or my ink ready and we'll go so I'm set up here I've got a piece of paper I've got my lino roller and I've got some of the pink paint on it um, so I'm just going to get little bits that fall from the ceiling in the stable I'm, I'm, I'm really want to stamp. I'm just going to stamp it off camera. You're not going to see me do this. It's just that there's not enough room for. You can see I've got a lino roller and I'm stamping the stamp. So, and I'm just going to move that down onto the floor there. So I've loaded my stamp. It's reasonably juicy, and I kind of want a kind of center it. Now, this is the good thing about working on, you're not working on the front of a piece of furniture where you're, you're more liable to move it. Just go along it like this, making sure that you push the whole thing, making sure that you've done your edges, because that'll make it crisp. We're not going for distressed here. I've inked the whole thing up. There we go. Let's have a wee kick and see how it is. There we go. Now, I'm just going to do the same with my other one. I'm inking up my roller, I'm grabbing my stamp, and we're just going along it like that. Oopsie, got a little bit too much paint on the edge there. I don't want it to bleed all over my furniture. There we go again. Just going straight over the key lock, but just lining it up with the one underneath. Again, patting the edges so it's nice and crisp. There's not much I can do about the keyhole. Don't 
don't shift it, even if your drawers are a little bit wobbly and an old piece of carpet in a stable, keep it nice and secure. There we go. That's that one done. Now, you get the concept. So I've got my stamps laid out. I'm just going to go on and stamp them with the colours that I said I was going to do. So the white's going to be these ones and this green is going to, the O'Donnell is going to be this colour here. So I'll just get on and do that. Our stamping is done. So we need to put our transfers on each section. Now, how you do this is up to you, but I really want to have the sort of the page, the middle, which is, yeah, this one, I had it first. I like the succulents, the succulents go with the whole boho theme. So I'm trying to kind of like work from this one and this one. So I decided that um, I quite like this piece here for here. Now, the handy dandy thing about the Prima transfers is this has got this rough line on the front. So I'm just gonna be quite bold and cut this up here like that. And now I'm trying to work out whether I want a little bit going under my wood. Um, I think it's gonna be six and two threes actually. Now, if I bring this down, I'm not losing, the only thing I'm losing is that tiny little bit of branch up the top. So I'm just gonna be bold and I'm just gonna cut that as well because that's how I roll. Um, I think I'm gonna do something like that. There. Now, this is the first part going on. Fortune favors the bold. Oops. So if you've never applied a furniture transfer before, it's really good if you seal it. This is self-sealing paint. Um, you just put it wherever you want and rub it on with a stick. So this is my first part going down here now. Onto this section here. I'm not too worried about these edges because these are going to be covered with the um, with a little wood to make it look like little kind of compartments. So, and I still haven't thought of hardware for this piece yet, but we'll get to that. So you use a little transfer tool. I'm just gonna take that over there. And all you do is rub and rub and rub and rub and rub and rub and rub until you rub it all off onto your piece. I like to go all the way over it first of all, doing all the way over it just so I know that it's down and it's not going to move. Now, when you start to see it getting opaque through the top like that, then you know it's starting to transfer. So it's good if you kind of get going and then you can kind of work with it. Um, oh. Takes a bit of welly when you're sitting down. I'm not too worried if I lose those little bit of branches there because they're actually going to be covered with the uh, um, the little bits of wood. Now I'm going to go on and I'm going to put this one on and then we'll do the next one. So I'm going to be quite brave on this one and I'm just going to cut the section that I want out of this part. Um, I want it more white than the greenery, so I'm just going to do something like this, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, we can add another little bit at the top section of this. So again, get in your position in the way you want it, using your little transfer tool to go all over it first just so it's kind of like bedding it down first before you start scraping so I would say that's good and then just scrape like crazy what I will do is I think I might get these little frony things berries seed pods and have these kind of I'll just show you what I'm going to do 
I'm just going to cut these out here like that. And I need to straighten off my edge and put these coming down or coming out. Yeah, probably coming down. I'll just show you how that looks. So something like something like that. I better do this one now first because it's overlapping the other one. So I'm going to go on and you can see what I'm doing. I'm cutting it up into pieces and parts and applying it. Once it's been applied, I like to burnish it down. And what I tend to do is I just use... Now, there's two sides to this. There's the black front and there's the clear back. Use this, the clear, not the, the black, or you'll rub it on the transfer. Ask me how I know that one. Give it a good burnish down like that. That's the best way to burnish it onto your piece. Just like that. I know it's not coming back off now. Fabulous. So I'll get on and do the rest of the squares. All I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my transfer, what works where, and cut it up into the sections. That's all the transfers done in all the sections. Now, I could stain these. I brought stain over to the studio. Um, I was considering staining them, but I think I would like to do a sort of wash. So I'm just going to put a piece of this here so it doesn't get onto my piece, just so you can see what I'm doing. I've got Annie Sloan's, Sloan's Hornfleur and I don't need too much and I've got quite quite a lot of water here because I want my I don't want it too dark and this can get too dark quite quick so all I'm doing is I'm mixing this into a watery solution Oop. but try not to get it everywhere now when you do this there's always a little bit of a darker amount on your brush so make sure you wash it all off so that it's and I've got my little edging strips here beside me and all I'm going to do is I'm going to stain them like this put the stain on them so it's quite watery and once I've got them all stained I'm not going to stain the whole thing once I've got it all stained I'm just going to take a cloth and I'm just going to rub back the wood like that so that the wood grain's still still showing so I'm going to get on and I'm going to do all my little sticks all my little separators from my drawers and then this will really start to come together. So all my little edges of beading have been stained and I've dried them off with a heat gun so they're nice and dry and I've uh, dry fitted them onto the piece just to make sure that everything fits. So this is what it's going to be but obviously the opposite way around that's the top drawer this is I'm working from the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is uh, Martin and I deliberated we could have nail gunned this in but I don't want the big nail holes and I figure there's enough surface area to use a heavy duty glue, so that's what I'm going to use. So all I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to start down the bottom, is I'm just going to apply it. You can't see me applying it, but you get the gist. I'm going to apply it to all of my little, and I don't want it too much that it bursts out the edges, although I'm going to be putting a little bit of distress into the corners. So if we do get a little bit of overspill, it's not really going to be the end of the world. But the, probably the best thing is if you're using a heavy duty adhesive to get one that dries clear. I think Gorilla do, Glue do a clear one. I just use this one because I really like it, but it, it doesn't unfortunately come in clear. And it's really, really well priced. So what more could you want? Um, so making sure there's not too much taking the excess off of my fingers I already know this is probably going to be quite a messy job um, I've got a cloth beside me and I'm going to start with the two long ones first and let's hope that Martin, have you done your mask correctly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you don't have a Martin that can make you these, you could use other little bits of wood, like um, you could make it a little bit thicker and use, you know, uh, I don't know what you call them, stirring sticks. Um, I've got loads of them. Just, you know, get them from the hardware shops. Um, you could use those. It would be, you know, you'd have to kind of cut each you'd have to do it cubed because they're not this long so you'd have to do it more cubed but it's another solution of how you could actually do this achieve this look if you don't have a martin 
So I'm going to go on and I'm just going to glue this all together. And then what we, it's get it's really late here in Scotland. So what we're going to do is we're going to put something on top of this one heavy board with loads of weights on top of it to um, apply lots of pressure to these so that they, they dry nice and uh, secure to my piece. And tomorrow we'll be working on handles. We'll be working on a little bit more on the carcass and then we'll be getting on to waxes, sealing and a little bit of distressing. It's completely dried overnight. Everything is way solid. Even if you bang that, these, these little um, edging strips are not gonna come off. Now, I wasn't quite sure what to do with handles. I didn't want them to overwhelm the piece. I wanted them to kind of melt into the piece. So what I did was I end up with a whole load of door pulls and things off of furniture <laughs> that I never reuse. So what I did was I looked in my stash and I found a whole array of wooden knobs. I've got these three here, which have not even been stained. So I'm going to stain these three natural with natural wood stain. And uh, the rest I'm going to paint in British Racing Green, which is this dark green on this here. So I'm going to go off and paint the handles and set them to the side because then we're going to get on to a little bit of distress in each square. I need to... Um, find a bit of stamp to go along here because it looks just a little bit strange this kind of panel here that I'm not happy with and we're going to be waxing and distressing and then we'll get onto the carcass. What I've got in here is a little bit of the pink that painted here and a little bit of the hornflower to make a sort of dirty pink. I'm trying to get this sort of colour here that's in the transfer. Now you don't have to do this part, but I want it to be quite distressed. So as you can see here, this is what I've done just on some of the white parts. I've taken it kind of onto the transfer just to kind of make it look like it's bedded down in there. You can slightly sand these if you want, but I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to keep them quite crisp, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. I might go back and decide to do little bits, but this is what I'm doing here. So I'll show you on this one here. Now you've all seen me do distressing before. You can use a various, um, different things when I find my other thing it'll be even better aha so I've got a palette knife here which I use for distress I've got a silicone blade which is good for distress a transfer tool is good for distress and a paintbrush but a paintbrush will give you a completely different effect these will not be the same so this is really just kind of to get into edges now the trick of this is if you're not really into a sort of distress look and you want to try it for the first time, it's just small amounts. I like quite a heavy distress so, and I'm quite brave so I just go for it. But you know, have a cloth ready. This is self-sealable paint. Have a cloth ready. If you're using self-sealable paint, you can wipe it if you don't like it. It's good to try these things. So all I'm doing in the dirty pink is kind of going to go something like, put my glasses on, just something like That's probably enough for that square there. Maybe let's touch it there. Yeah. This one here, same same process, not too much on the blade. I'll show you the blade as opposed to the palette knife. Now, usually you put palette knife in something that actually is able to sit flat into the paint. So your palette knife does something different. It does some more sort of scratchy like that as opposed to the blade, which does something like this. So mixing the two and, oh, and the transfer tool does something like that. It does something different as well. So, you know, and I want to do a little bit around down the bottom. I just don't want it to look like it's just been plonked there. A wee bit over the top of there and that'll do it no harm. Right, so that's, that's that part. I think I want a little bit more on here so just something like that now I'm leaving these parts at the moment because I'm not quite sure I think I just want these crisp I've put another little border along here unfortunately it doesn't go with the same borders this is a more of a kind of Indian inspired kind of bohemian border these are more sort of ethnic -y, so it doesn't really matter it's just filled that space in and the eye will make it up as it goes along so all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do the same thing with this one here and bring that across there like that, down in this edge here. And, and that's it. 
So I'm going to do all of the, the, these two squares, let this dry, and then we're going to get on to waxing, uh, clear waxing and dark waxing to finish this part. And then while Martin kindly puts my handles on here, we'll get on with the carcass. This is dry now. So I want to try and sort of darken up this a little bit and put a little bit of a sort of dirty sort of edge in here. So the best way to do that is always apply clear wax first. Don't just go in with a dark wax, it'd be too dark. So, and clear wax can work as an eraser. I know I say this all the time, but I have, when I first started doing furniture, <laughs> covered it in this, it ain't coming off. Um, so you need a soft cloth for this, um, a nice soft lint-free cloth or my daughter's pyjama bottoms, what, you know, whatever works for you. Um, and what I'm going to do is, although this is self-sealable paint, I'm still going to wax it because I need this as a buffer and it'll still, um, uh, what's the word, it'll still work on top of this so we're not, not, not too worried. So I'm just going to do this here and I'm going to wax my strips so that they've been waxed as well. I'm just going to show you this centre one, this bottom drawer actually. Don't worry if there's bits catching in at the edges, we'll get them when we come round with the dark. So add plenty of wax. And get it right into these edges. clear wax down at that edge and this will help seal your transfer as well so you're doing a sort of multi multi approach here you can apply your wax with a brush but I'm just choosing right now to do it with a cloth now all where that clear wax is in the edges we can get that when we come along with our dark brush now I have a small artist brush now, this is I'm dipping it in my dark wax. Now, I want to do two things. I want to have a little sort of dirty edge in here, so I'm going to apply this as a square, and then I'm just going to do little circles like this, and then I'm just going to apply that like that there, and that's just giving us a sort of more of a sort of distressed edge. On the this stuff, on the on the um, outer um, beading that we've applied, because it's been clear waxed, I'm just going to darken that whole, just a little bit. It was just a little bit pale, just like that. Um, same down here, and just run it along here. Now remember, you can't just do the front. You're going to have to do it in the sides like this. And this is where you can grab all that clear wax that's sitting in there. Again, I'm still wanting it a little bit darker around these edges. And that, you can bring that over. In fact, you know what? I think I'm just going to be bold and do something like this across this. And it'll take away some of that very pinky, pinky colour. So that's on there like that. And I'm just going to come in with a, a blending brush. And I'm just going to do this on these ones. Not all of it, just some of it kind of gives it two different tones. So I'm going to go on and I'm going to wax the rest of this now and then when it's kind of a, uh, you don't want big parts of it kind of um, like sitting on it. If you can see any parts like that, just kind of like wipe them off. But I'm quite happy with that. You can build up as much wax as you want, just as long as you apply lots of clear wax to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I've just completely waxed the carcass with clear wax, but I had a tiny little bit of transfer left over, so I just popped it on the top just to pull the front and the top together. Now, I've done it everywhere with two coats, but I'm just gonna show you this part down here. If you can see the differentiation between this part and this part, um, and this side and this side, it's because I haven't, um, I haven't put the dark wax on this side so all I'm doing here is just to kind of age it up is I'm just again running that into the grooves just a little bit but under here turn a bit around my legs now because I've put the dark wax on I don't need to worry about it um, because 
I can just wipe it and that ages it off a little bit. So this side here has a little bit more, I think, so I'll just kind of be a little bit more generous. I'm using my clear wax cloth for this, just in case I, I overdo it and it ends up looking too grungy. So all I'm going to do is finish this side off and all, that's all I've been doing, just kind of, just aging up certain parts like that. And I'll do the top as well, put a bit of dark on the top. Now I'm just want to say about the inside. The inside, although it's all been washed, if you think, oh, I've got a really sort of nasty carcass, if you just get a water-based stain and uh, just pull a little bit of water-based stain all up on a cloth and just wipe it like that. That gets rid of that sort of lighter colour there. It's not going to make it look perfect, um, but who really examines the inside of their furniture? Um, but you want it that it looks a little bit better than that so I'm just going to do that and finish off the dark wax on the top and then we'll see what it looks like with the drawers in. So here's the finished piece and it's came out really nice. I really like it with its drawers and everything in it. It makes sense. I think sometimes when you're working out a context on the floor and the two pieces aren't together it's kind of difficult to understand the concept. Now why did I do what I chose to do? I really like the piece itself. I love the drawers, it's just it had so many different things that was wrong with it. It had a little edge around here that was broken in some areas. Um, it had the multiple holes where the handles were, so I knew that these sections had to have painted. I wanted to keep some of the wood underneath, so I had to pick the best sections that I could out of it, and that's why it's became quite mismatched, but I think that's what works. The handles, free, they're all off piece, old pieces of furniture. Uh, the uh, redesign re by Prima uh, transfer is lovely and it works well with the redesign by Prima stamps. It's all waxed, it's all sealed, it's been dark waxed. I'll put the remainder on the top and really there's not a lot more else to say about it. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this um, video and um, if you um, really like it then can you consider subscribing and sharing and um, possibly leaving me a comment if you want to comment you can comment on maybe something that you'd like to do and you're not quite sure how to do it I'm happy to do it you know if you ask me a question I, I answer all of the comments personally Martin doesn't answer them I don't have a secret person that answers my comments I answer everyone so if you leave me a comment and you're trying to do something just let me know give it a big thumbs up I think that's just about everything that I have to tell you about that. That's that's it. And um, I'll see you again next time. Thank you.